One month after being indicted on charges of insider trading and lying to the FBI, Congressman Chris Collins is maintaining his innocence. The Republican is accused of tipping off his son and other investors about information that negatively impacted pharmaceutical, a uh, pharmaceutical company, Inmate Immunotherapeutics. News 8 Special Correspondent Dave Graber sat down with Collins at his Washington office, and we'll get right to it with Collins answering the big question here. Does he think what he did is illegal? Never. Uh, I was always very careful in, as I <clears throat> updated other shareholders of the progress of the company, to make sure anything I told them was already in the public domain, things that uh, you know, were not privileged at all, and I uh, was always very careful about that. And in any regard, uh, the stock wasn't publicly traded before then, and all the stock that was sold was sold in what they called a private placement. Uh, to sophisticated investors with 100-page documents and full disclosure of everything. So everything was done uh, properly, and I should also say my role in the company, including a member of the board, was cleared by the Ethics Committee as I came in six years ago. As all of my outside business interests uh, were disclosed uh, when I came to Congress, and they asked for certain changes, and I did make the changes uh, that, that they required as I came here six years ago. When did you first learn uh, of the, the federal charges? When, when, were, when were you first tipped off about that? Uh, when they knocked on my door on April 25th uh, at 6 a.m. What was that like? I mean, you've never faced anything like this in the past. Yeah, that, that was the shock of all shocks, to, to have, uh, turns out, you know, two agents at your door at, at 6, 6 a.m., uh, you know, saying they just want to talk. Uh, as it turns out, you know, they don't read you your rights. They don't tell you you can have an attorney. They don't tell you why they're there. It's just, oh, we'd like to talk. Uh, and the next thing you know, of course, you're innocent. You invite them in, I'm, you know, in a bathrobe, you know, bare feet, and you just got out of bed. And, uh, you know, I chatted with them for 45 minutes or so, and they wanted to know about my involvement. I shared everything from A to Z. Uh, and then at the end of it all, they and said, oh, by the way, we have a subpoena for you. <laughs> Around April, a grand jury was, was convened. Um, there was a plea that was offered at the time. Why not take that plea? Well, again, I can't talk about the case. Uh, you know, that was disclosed. I don't even want to get into that. But, uh, you know, I am innocent, and uh, you know, I'm going to fight this uh, right to the end in court, and I will be exonerated. CBS News has exclusive video of you on the phone on the White House lawn around the same time that these accusations are detailed in that uh, federal indictment. Who are you talking to? Again, I don't want to get into the case at all. You know, we're, that's something we will defend probably sometime next year in court, so I, I really can't get into details. Did you ever divulge privileged information to either your son Cameron or anyone else? Again, I'm not going to discuss the case, uh, Dave, other than to, again, uh, remind everyone I'm innocent of the meritless charges that have been placed against me, and I'm confident I will be exonerated. This has created a tremendous amount of chaos uh, in Western New York's 27th. Um, guilt or innocence aside, there are questions about what will happen in, in November. You suspended your campaign a couple of days after the indictment was announced. What do you think should happen? Well, so let me just say, you know, th it was three days after, four days after the shock of this with my family. We got together, and uh, at, at that point in time, there was no question I needed to remove the spotlight from my family as best I could. Uh, while I'm innocent, I needed to look out for my family, so I did suspend my campaign. That's the right decision. I've expressed to the county leaders, the eight county chairs, I will cooperate fully in, in uh, uh, deferring to them as they look for someone to replace me on the ballot. Uh, other than that, I am not involved. Uh, you know, the powers to be are working through that. I will leave that with them. Uh, and uh, other than that, I'm going to be very supportive. Dave Graber reporting. According to the Board of Elections, there are only three ways a candidate's name can be taken off the ballot. 
death, disqualification based on something like residence, or if the candidate is nominated to a different office. So far, Collins has not expressed any interest in another office, and according to the Erie County Board of Elections, there are no open positions really available at the moment. The general election is November 6th. We offered Collins' Democratic opponent, Nick McMurray, a chance to comment on camera today, but he declined until tomorrow.